Jag har inte ens historia. 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 Of what field did you enter into? If your personal temple is not clean or not presentable, which is your personal altar, to present to the Most High, the Holy Spirit cannot dwell within your personal temple. So, y'all, we want to get you absolutely clear of your holy temple and what you need to do to ensure that the Holy Spirit dwells there. That's right. That means man or woman cannot be abusive to themselves. And only you know what's plaguing you or hurting you that you need to get that correct for your personal temple for the Holy Spirit to dwell there. If not, pain or other things will make you take alternative measures. You don't want to do that. Because that's what Satan is coming after, weak spots. Whatever the pain and trouble, he's going to offer relief. He did it to Christ in Matthew 4. He offered him total relief of what? Of Word of the Most High. You ain't got none of that. I can give it all to you. Plus, I give you a few treasures on top of it. So, y'all, with all of the information out there being this crazy out there, Pakistanians, uh, where the boys Taliban just killed 135 children in the school. Y'all, we may be on the brink of nuclear war. North Korea is threatening. The U.S. don't know what to do with them because South Korea is right next door with many U.S. Air Force and Navy there. Russia, the big bear, is being hauled tied with sanctions put on him. Why y'all think gas is dropping so low? So y'all, we are getting awfully close to these times at hand. So y'all, we just wanted to hit a little bit on some things concerning the temple. Will the temple be? What are you saying, brother? The is acting up on the south side. Right. Absolutely. And you see, all they did was follow the rules that they hear all the time. When you come here, if you need 48 hours to get your life together, just blame it on the brother. It's an automatic 48 hours they're going to be rounded up brothers, trying to get them to admit to the crime you claim. But it didn't take long for her. She didn't have that much experience here in the STL, the accused, and sticking with it. Feel for this call, but the problem is, uh, the chief of police didn't come out and make those same apologies to our people that he did for them when the Royal Brothers hammer both them down. And y'all quiet as kept that boy come over last night and said word around the streets on that. That was a bad push deal. <laughs> Gone wrong. <laughs> So y'all, when we talk about the Ark of the Covenant, the box in which Moses was given the Ten Commandments to put inside of that, it was basically our war machine that went before us. The Most High himself wrote with his finger on these stones. Now we got the new movie Exodus out, which I heard is a trap. They basically say the burning bush was a what? Three-year-old boy talking to Moses out of the bush? He must be God. Yes. And Moses is doing the Ten Commandments in the mind. So y'all, we have to correct these things. So if you go to see these movies on sight and mission, you don't get yourself caught up. And you start to repeat what you saw off the movie because that's all is going to be portrayed in the newspapers. What the movie represents. Not what's in the word, y'all. They're starting to become a famine of the word. And that means they are trying to take or remove 
the knowledge of God from their mindset. They don't want to retain it. And when you don't want to retain it, then you give it another alternative objective to what it's saying. And then everybody starts to play the guessing game. Well, I saw the movie and the actual Bernard Bush was a five-year-old boy. We were that in the scripture. Yeah, exactly. Right. Not only this, but the A&E channels, y'all, when they talk about the mysteries, they do a very good job of archaeology. But when they start to explain things, they'll explain the way the supernatural of it, what's going on, or what we call murders. They talked about the burning bush and said there's a Achaia tree over in Arabia, probably the same place, that was consumed. It turned to ash, but it just didn't burn up. It was sitting there with ash, but never did explain the voice that came from that bush. So y'all, they make up a reason why it could have happened, but then they would never explain the supernatural side of it. Sadducees, y'all, at work. Oh, who is who is moving the thing? That's right. Apparently, sometimes I'm going to a little, little research right here. It's called uh, Ancient Jewish Art by Gabriel C. Rajna. Uh huh. All right, this is something they put together. Right here on page uh, 72, 73, you got Moses and the Israelites depicted on the wall and door of the rovers. Exodus. Israelites leaving Egypt. I'm going to pass this around so I can get a closer look at it. That's right. You feel me? So. The fact that they even go as far as cast the Egyptians is, is so-called Romans. Let you know how desperate they really are. A little research that lets you know that the Egyptians were men of color. That's right. At that point, you gotta admit the Israelites. That's right. So we have to all their history when we stay before Egyptians, Ethiopians. So we're gonna pass this around too. Y'all make sure y'all get this back to me. We need this back. Some of these books very out of line now. So, so y'all gonna get right at it. Since nobody has no more questions or concerns, we're going to get right into Exodus chapter 24. What's the main topic for the day? Oh, let me get back up there, y'all. My bad. So, y'all, it's, it's, it's a lot of uh, questions or concerns out there. Where is the Ark of the Covenant? And will it? When the new temple set up in Jerusalem, will it be a part of it? Will it be the original Ark of the Covenant? When we call out scripture, can we call out the whole scripture? So we write, we write it down all the time. Stone and a law and commandments which I have written, 
that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua. And Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for us, until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto them. So as Aaron and Joshua went up, I mean Moses and Joshua went up, they left representatives down there in case any questions was to be asked. You know, so the Most High always, in every situation, never leave you without. Never. Because if Moses had a trip on Joshua going up into that mountain, just like the high priest, if he would have tripped going into the holies of holies, that's why they used to tie a rope around his leg with little bales on it. And he would go behind the holy of holy, holy of holies first to offer up his transgression sin offering, and then for the people, they would pull on that rope every now and then. See what's going on back there. If they pull on that rope and he did kick back, they keep pulling and he'd be coming dragged out of there. Because the Most High is serious about his word. When he call you up into that, that realm of righteousness, y'all, we need to be extra careful that, uh, you know, that this is coming to the altar in your prayer or whatever it be that your mindset is in total righteousness at this point. Because the Lord will take your heart from you right then and there if you choose to play games with him. I'm sorry, but uh, I know you know my heart. I just like that bit of wickedness over there. No, don't play with him like that. Because we got too many examples in here of that type of behavior and punishment was exacted immediately. We'll get into it where this one boy touched the ark of the covenant and was put down. Go ahead, bro. Verse 15. Uh -huh. And Moses went up into the mountains, and a cloud covered the mountain. And the glory of Yah abode upon Mount Sinai. And the cloud covered it six days. How many days? Six days. Uh -huh. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Does that sound kind of familiar? Uh -huh. Six days he up there working. Mm -hmm. What type of work is getting down? Is these the same commandments like, you know, same way giving it to Adam in like manner? Six days of creating everything. Moses is getting all the knowledge. Getting all of it. Go ahead, bro. Verse 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. So y'all, this is why they are, they are so up and on, so to speak, about North Korea, what it's done with some. Mm -hmm. Look y'all, Hollywood has always been the forerunner of the future. Mm -hmm. It's how they gonna warn their people to get ready. Once again, y'all ask y'all if y'all have not seen it. See that uh, uh, Will Smith was Independence Day? Yep. Yeah. And when you see how they bring forth that so-called UFO, it's enfolding itself in a cloud and fire. It's like rolling fire almost, y'all. So this is knowledge they've been getting because they've been tapping into the dark side for a long time. And then they put it out there into film. So even like the movies Noah or uh, this new Exodus, there is some fact-finding issues in there. But you got to know what you study. What's not right, rush it off. Right. But there's going to be some fact-finding missions within all of these movies, y'all. They have to warn their own soldiers what's about to come to pass because prophecy don't come to pass whether we believe it or not or the devil worship we believe it or not. Right. It's coming to pass. So they are set to warn their own. Go ahead, bro. Verse 18. Uh -huh. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud right, and got him up to the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. So 40 days and 40 nights Moses was up in there without either food or water. We read about three so far in here. We know Enoch, in the books of Enoch, uh, we know Elijah did it, Moses did it, we know the Messiah did it. But y'all think about that. We just did the Day of Atonement. 24 hours. 
And we was watching that clock like a hawk. <laughs> this is 960 hours long. And no food and water. Totally abstaining from defiling. And y'all, this is why it ties in so perfectly with, with our dietary law that we're going to hit on that a little bit if we get a chance to understand why you have to be holy inside first and then out. Go ahead, bro. We'll get ready. Chapter 25. Go ahead. Chapter 25, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly. With his heart, he shall take my offering. See, what is the key word in that? Willingly. Willingly. So, it's just like before the Levites were to command tithes from everyone, it was still a willingly issue. The same thing happened in Acts when all of the new apostles or disciples sold property and brought it. And some held back to Christ. Peter told them the same thing. It was yours. It was in your power. You didn't have to manipulate anything. That's your property. The most high end in here of taking anything from anybody. No need. Absolutely. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Uh -huh. And this is the offering which ye shall take with them gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin dyed red and badger skin. What kind of skin? Badger's skin. What is a badger? Mm. A what? He's out of the weasel fat. Now what is the most high asking for his skin for? <laughs> so y'all, we have to understand, y'all, we don't want to like to get mixed up into different things where we get tied up in the letter of law and we don't understand certain things, you know, and, and we'll go over more like, you know, if you see a quarterback, is that a football made out of a pig skin? He's in total violation of Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14. No, it, it didn't talk about the pig skin itself. It talked about his carcass. Better not come into your mouth. Go ahead, brother. Uh, and share wood, oil for the light, spices for the anoint oil, and for sweet incense. Ironing stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show thee, that I show you after the pattern of the tabernacle. See, and this is very important. Y'all, we read a little bit that verse 35 and once I say I dwell among you. Y'all, when your temple is clean and you allow the Holy Spirit in, he's dwelling amongst you. He's a witness. You got this witness because the Holy Spirit is truth. Now, if you say I'm full of the Holy Spirit and you lie continuously, you're doing a, a grave disservice and you're borderline and blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. This is what Satan, y'all, this is what we got to understand. This is what Satan needs. He needs you to acknowledge. I, I feel the Holy Spirit manifested in me. Which you won't feel it like you see in the Pentecostal church of flipping and doing backflips. You throw it up under the first row of the benches. Speaking strange languages. How you will know a sign or a miracle will manifest itself immediately. And you will know that you have the Holy Spirit at that point. And you start to work it from there. Well, Satan comes at that time to try to get you to blaspheme because there's no forgiveness for it. You read in these scriptures, two unpardonable sins that we know. There's several more that lean across that line, messing with children and their innocence. But we know if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit or take the mark of the beast, there's no forgiveness in this world or the world to come. I don't think there's no other way to explain that plainly. 
Go ahead, brother. I'm trying to ask Dan, what was that uh, scripture on the uh, court? The Leviticus 11 and the Deuteronomy 14 is the Levitical Dietary Law. Thank you. And also, y'all trip off the offering that they bring in is to make the uh, tabernacle, the sanctuary, That's right. the ark of the covenant. And that verse 9 or verse 8 says that I may dwell among them. So Moses got more than just Ten Commandments in that mouth. He got a pattern on how to set up God's sanctuary on earth. That's right. And that the Lord would righteously dwell with them. So they can have the ark of the covenant. Everywhere where they go to war, God is with them. Right. And based off the instructions that he showed them how to make it, but it was off their own offering. That's right. Willingly bring it, and we're going to make something that approves uh, God is with us. Mm. Wow. His presence is amongst us at this point. Yeah. Mm. Notice it was all off a willing heart that they offered. Think about it. Somebody said, look, bring in everything y'all got right now. Offer it, and God going to show us what to build to prove that he's with us right now. He going to dwell among us. Feel me? So strip off that. He's in the mountain getting these instructions. Yeah, that's right. We in uh, verse 10. Verse 10. And they shall make an ark of shit of wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof. See, the Most High give explicit instructions on how the building should take place. Mm -hmm. Down to the left. You know, y'all, this is why I brought them off of a fee. If you can find anywhere in the scripture where it says to, to, uh, do Christmas on December the 25th. It's a simple question. Just, just show us where the instructions are at. Right, right. But yet you'll get cussed out for it. Every holy day of year be required is written down to the letter and the day. Go ahead, brother. All right, verse 10. And they shall make an ark of shed wood. Two cubits and a half shall be a lift of wood. And a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. So it's, it's equal in height, width, and depth. Two cubits and a half. A cubit being from the tip of a man's elbow, I mean his elbow to the tip of his top forefinger, or 18 inches. The width and the height. The width and the height. So you're talking and you're saying 18 inches times 236 plus another nine is what? Forty five had trouble shooting me. I ain't even Forty five. Forty five. Yeah. So just forty five inches, y'all. So you get an idea of the length, width, and height of the ark of the covenant. Right. So you you can picture these things in your mind. So if anybody show up with the ark of the covenant, the length of this table they sit there, you know that's not that's not the ark of the covenant of the most high. If they bring it forth and say we bringing it into the temple, and they bring something forth that length. And the same thing, you, you'll see the same exact thing on the measurement of the ark. It gets it right down to the left. And the ark was almost three football fields, three and a half football fields long. No 75 problem. feet wide, three stories at the top. Go ahead, brother. All right, verse 11. Uh -huh. And thou shalt overlay it with your gold. What we gonna overlay it with? Your gold. Uh -huh. Within and without shalt thou overlay it, and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. So y'all getting an idea of what this, this 45 inch height width and length box is pure gold with laid, with uh, inlaid within and without. With pure gold, y'all. Not none of that leaves or eastern low gold. Here go, y'all. Said that in chairs. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof. So casting four rings, you know, on each corner of that box, you know. So y'all get, getting this in y'all mind, what how this box was being uh, designed, and y'all these are heavenly blueprints. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof. And two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. Right. And thou shalt make staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. So, y'all, it's getting two staves, and go overlay them with gold as well. 
And if y'all ever wondering why crystal and gold are, are the top elements within computers for the uh, chips, nothing is a better conduit than gold. And you constantly see crystal being involved as, as conduct. So y'all, it's, it's a reason why it was being designed like it was. Go ahead, bro. And thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the side of the ark, uh -huh. that the ark may be born with them. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it. See, y'all, so these can never be removed. The Most High give explicit instruction on how it should be moved. If you walk up to the ark and see one of them staves go, don't go looking for it to put it back in there. It should have not been moved. So y'all, this is what the Most High is saying. You, we get to the point, y'all, of where we'll actually go around the Father's instructions and touch what we are not. It's the same way when Christ was uh, coming out of that tomb after three days and three, days and three nights, and he told uh, Mary that they couldn't touch him yet because he hadn't ascended to the Father. Y'all, there's pure righteousness, not that righteousness that Creflo Dollar told them that none of his members could touch him unless he went into his anointing room and got it and then come back out. Go ahead. <laughs> Queen of England went there. 
Mussolini with her. Haile Selassie, they know, is direct descendant of King Solomon. And they, why would they go there? Are they trying to prove that it wasn't? You got Edomite rabbis that say, no, it ain't there. But yet, nobody bogarted their way down to the basement to see. But y'all, we got a lot of other scriptures where the Ark of the Covenant could be all doesn't really matter anymore. So y'all, we just want to hit a few scriptures we had a question before we move on concerning that. When we talked about it being a war vessel, let's go right to from 1 Samuel 13. That's how we do, y'all. See, Lucifer is an imitator. Every sporting event y'all see, they bring out their, what's called a mascot. Or they war chest. <laughs> right. One seventy thirteen. Coming back to Exodus, we'll be done. No, we're done with Exodus. Just want to get it. We're gonna get right into some Deuteronomy because some things happened with that first ark. Actually, there was two arcs made, y'all. That we need to understand. Which one did we take the war? And what was inside of both of those? Arcs of the covenant. Some say the original was replaced when the Babylonians sacked Jerusalem. Go ahead, bro. 1 Samuel chapter 13, let's start. 1 Samuel chapter 13, right. We can get right to the part of the war part of it. What about left? Yeah. First Samuel chapter 13, verse 11. Oh, we ain't heard it. We'll go to Samuel chapter 6. Samuel chapter 13 verse 11 and Samuel said what hast thou done and Saul said because I saw that the people were scattered from me and that thou camest not within the days appointed and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash therefore said I the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgad, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now will the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him, a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. And Samuel arose and gathered him up from Gilgad. And gathered a vengeance and saw number the people that were present with him, about 600 men. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, and the people that were present with him, abode in Gabbath of Benjamin. Gibeah. Gibeah. Gibeah of Benjamin. But the Philistines encamped in Mishmash. And the spoils came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned away that led to Oprah. Wow. And <laughs> took the land of, of Shaw. And another company turned away to Beth Horn, Beth Horon. And a 
another company turned to the way of the border that looked to the valley of Zebul, Zeboil, or Lord the wilderness. Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. For the Philistines said, Least the Hebrews make them swords or spears. But all the Israelites went down the Philistine to sharpen every man his share and his cult, his cult, and his axe, and his meadow. Yet they had a file for the meadow, and for the cult, and for the forks, and for the axe, and to sharpen the gold. So it came to pass in that day of battle that there was neither sword nor spirit found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan. But with Saul and Jonathan, his son was found there. And the garrison of the Philistine went out to the passage of Mishmash. Can we can hold that. I just want to jump right over to 2 Samuel chapter 6. And what I'm just getting to is, is that war time, the Most High would tell us, the prophet would tell us, go get the ark and get it ready for battle. You know, but a lot of times, y'all, we get to the point that where we go to battle and we think the Lord just going to come, come and deliver us out of our own personal battles. It's like starting a fight with somebody and looking for help. And then you even get a whooping. So usually the most fights we start, you usually get beat up. Yeah. The ones that you say, okay, you know, or look, I, we don't have to do this, you usually be the victor in that one. But the ones you start without cause, usually you pay a hefty price for it. So y'all, in like manner, we would start fights with, with different nations because we had the Ark of the Covenant. We actually said, we have God here on earth with us, and we would pick wrong battles. Most I say, no, y'all don't, don't decide and do things like that. Y'all, in like manner, if we don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling with us, ain't no need picking a fight with Satan and his name. You'll find yourself torn asunder. You'll get into some acts concerning that. Go ahead, bro. What we at? 2 Samuel chapter 6. And y'all, this is another example of the Ark of the Covenant being misused at wartime. And a lot of people have a problem with this uh, script because they say the law was unfair. But well, we're going to let it see if the, if, if the righteous judge is unfair or is it us. Go ahead, bro. Read on a little bit of that. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 1. Go ahead, brother. 
And they set the ark of God upon a new car. What they do? Set it upon a new car. Right. And brought it out of the house of a bitter, a bitter dad that was in Gibeah. Gibeah. And Uzziah. And Ahio. The sons of Abinadad drave the new cart. Moses said to the Lord of hosts. Right? And that means Lord of the army. They're about to reward the Philistines. That's right. They're like, let us go get the ark of the covenant. And it says, Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the church. The actual word host means army. So that's right. They're about to go to war. They need the Lord to battle for them. Then that's that ark of the covenant. It's like a weapon for us. Right. It's time to go to battle. That's what the Lord will meet with us and let us know the time it was. It's strictly a spiritual thing today. Right. You play this and sound like Star Trek, Star Wars, or something like that. But it's strictly a spiritual thing. That's when the Lord dealt with the, uh, the representatives of Israel and told them, look, this is what I want y'all to do. Mm -hmm. right, and as long as we stay righteous and do what he said, he will continue doing that. We ain't got so far away from him now where it's like, it's like the common now. Right. That's how he was just directly deal with it. Like, the brothers you see in Haiti doing all the voodoo and all that, like they used to be in their righteousness on the right hand side of the Lord, dealing with him spiritually. Now they just totally left eating uh, dumb burgers and <laughs> all types of drinking blood and all types of stuff that I the door. But I, the priests of God was, was spiritual, very spiritual, and that's what the Lord dealt with even at wartime. Go ahead, brother. David and David and all the house of Israel played before the no, and they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gebi, accompanying the ark of God. And and Ahio went before the ark, and David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on the on all manner of instruments mm. made of fir wood even on hearts, and on salt, and on the timbers, and on cornets, and on cymbals. And rejoicing they got to walk in the Lord. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And when they came to Nashon's threshing floor, Uzziah, Uzziah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it. For the oxen shook it. See, so first thing, y'all, we got a whole bunch of problems here. They then ran and got the Ark of the Covenant without permission. Mm -hmm. Then they put it on a new cart and drained it. Well, we just read the instructions of the Ark, how it should have been carried. Mm -hmm. we, it was four rings put on it, right? Yeah, two staffs. Two staffs go through the rings to be buried up what? Mm -hmm. On the mm -hmm. level of the priest's shoulder. They done threw it on the oxen part. Now they run into battle top speed. And they hit a pothole. And they hit a pothole. Now, I want y'all to think about this. Why they had to go with Levites? If the oxen is in front of the cart, what the oxen going to be doing when they get too full and not relieved? Ah. Ah. Dumb. And they got to go off of the covenant on earth. Yeah. 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 Right. Go ahead. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzziah, uh -huh. and God smote him. What, what did the Most High do? Smote him. Killed him. Smote him there for his error. For his what? Error. So what was his error, y'all? The Lord the Ark. Most High's instruction was what? Nobody touches the Ark of the Covenant. See, look, y'all, but the high priest that was to bear it up. See y'all, this is the same way. It ain't nothing changed. It was the same thing in the Garden of Eden. Why they had to get out of there after they see it, lest he uh, uh, put forth his hand and touch the tree of life and live forever in sin and unrighteousness? No, y'all got to get out of there. Uzziah had to get away with that. Then y'all have been a free for all. Go ahead, but read a little bit more there. We're going to jump right back to that first Samuel 4. But there are some very important things in there as well. And then we're going to get right to the heart of the matter. Go ahead, brothers. And there he died by the ark of God. What did he do? Died by the ark of God. Right. And David was displeased. And David was what? Displeased. So David's forehead wrinkled up about this matter. Why? 
Why David displeased? Go ahead, bro. Because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzziah, and he called the name of the place Perez, Perezua, Peruza. Perez, what you see? Perez, right this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day. What was David? Afraid of the Lord. And said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him, unto the city of David. But David carried it aside unto the house of Obed, Obed Edom, the, Jit, the Jittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed, Obed Edom, the Jittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed Edom and all the house and all his household. So we just want to jump right back into 174 because of some very important instructions with that as well, y'all. We just want to explain how important the Ark of the Covenant was and the Most High's commandments so you get a clear understanding of how powerful his words are. It's not as simple as just uh, uh, reciting them, y'all. We got to know it. You, because if you don't know them, you put forth your hand and defile it, it's going to be some problems. Satan got you right where he wants you, and that's the blasphemy, the Holy Spirit. Hit that forward one. The first sound. We're going to hit just a little bit of that five, y'all. Then we're going to get into why a second set of, or uh, uh, second arc had to be, second set of stones had to be made. Then we'll get just into a couple scriptures of what happened to the original Ark of the Covenant. Who grabbed hold of it and how it got out of our hands. And then if there is a true Ark of the Covenant in the heavens with the Messiah. Because we got a lot about this Revelation 11 that they're going to rebuild the temple and the Ark of the Covenant has got to be there. Well, we don't know who got it. There's going to be a bunch of different Ark of the Covenants show up. We can fall for that real easy. They say it's in the basement of the Vatican. Say it's on Mount Nebo. Say it's in the Acts of Ethiopia. It's almost like many shall come in my name saying I am Christ. Yeah. And she'll deceive many. Go ahead, bro. First Samuel chapter four. 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1. And the Lord of Samuel came to all Israel. Now, Israel went out against the Philistines to battle. To what? To battle. Uh -huh. And pitched beside Ebenezer. And the Philistines pitched in Aphek. Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. See, y'all, uh, when you see in array, battle in array, y'all, is what you saw in Ferguson. When you seen them tanks lined up and all the police stretched out, that's battle in array. That's pitched themselves against Israel. Was we in any kind of battle in array? Negative. No good. Right, negative. And when they joined battle, when they joined battle, Israel smitten. What? Israel was smitten before the Philistines, uh -huh. and they slew of the of the army in the field about four thousand men. Uh -huh. And when the people would come unto the camp, the elders of Israel said, "Wherefore hath thou the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? <laughs> Let us fit." Fetch. fetch, let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when when it come again, when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So we got a problem here right now. We already lost in the battle. We in war, and we lose. So. The problem is, 
We're going after the Ark of the Covenant second hand, right? So we we backwards on this one, ain't we? Yeah, yeah. It's almost like picking a fight and then go get your big brother when it gets too hot. Let me turn you up to that, sir. Y'all can get your big brother. It just don't look like it. <laughs> Let's get it. Verse 4. Uh -huh. So the people sent to Shiloh that any might bring forth this, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelt, in, which dwelt between the cherubs, and two sons of Eli, Hiphen, Hophni. 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 And Philip and Phineas, when there with when there with the ark of the covenant of God, and when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came unto the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout. See, now they hooting and hollering. Battle was sword and lost four thousand. They went and got the ark of the covenant, no instructions. Went to uh, the prophet Samuel's son, Phineas and Hobby, and got them to turn over the Ark of the Covenant. Now we're hooting and hollering like we about to win something. Go ahead, bro. So that the earth rained again. What did the earth do? Rain. So y'all, just like when we holler uh, a hallelujah sailor at the end, and it's ringing. Now you, you, you think of this with a whole camp. All of Israel are hollering because we see the Ark of the Covenant. Uh-oh. Somebody about to get it now. Uh-oh. Them Philistines finna get it now. Right. And you hooped and hop. But what we done did? Broke protocol, eh? Yep. Y'all, it's called a broken arrow or a loose cannon that we had. And y'all, in like manner, these are the things that Paul warned us of. Of wicked men creeping inside the body of Christ. Y'all, they gonna take the ark without permission and basically slide you a different doctrine that was written. If we ain't on our game, if we ain't following the instructions to the left. Right. Let's get some more of that. Verse 6. Uh -huh. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, what meaneth, what meaneth the noise of this great shout? in the camp of the Hebrews. <laughs> and they stood and they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is coming to the camp. See y'all, there's no misunderstanding about all of these nations knowing who our God is. That's right. And they knew what we would do, what we would bring, but y'all, Satan is a crafty adversary. He know the instructions of the Most High as well. Why? Because he was one of them cherubims in the high heavens sitting above the mercy seat. So he know the rules of the game as well. Oh, they don't want to get the Ark of the Covenant without permission. It's like going in the house knowing your parents keep the gun. And you go get it. Talking about somebody messing with you. What happened when your parents get that? I know you ain't went up in that time dressing wrong. They got that pistol out. He was messing with me. He... What's the rules about that? You gonna bypass the parents and go dig in the top dressing drawer and get that pistol out. Ready to do what? Like crazy. Right. Give me the gun, son. Let's get it. Verse 7 again. Uh -huh. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is coming to the camp. And they said, Woe unto us, for there have not been such a thing heretofore. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods? Right. These are the powers, the gods that smitten the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. See, so y'all, it was already written in the stones all over the world. They like, okay, these are the ones that went through that of ten plagues. They tore Egypt down. They got them, y'all. 
But the Most High is a righteous God. And he gives order. Even though the Philistines knew it, what happened in Egypt? And understand what they said. It's that same Ark of the Covenant that led that battle and tore Egypt up. But read a little bit more, we're going to see what happened. Verse 9. Uh -huh. Be strong. Be what? Be strong. And quiet your quit. and quit yourselves, my bad. Uh huh. And quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews, as they have been to you. Quiet, quit yourselves like men, and fight. So y'all want to say, quit yourselves, quit all that wine and the sniffing. Dry the snout up and let's get to war. Man up, right? Man up. Go ahead, brother. Verse 10. Uh-huh. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten, and they fled every man into his tent, and all who was a very great, and all... The, wait a minute. Read that again. Huh. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten, and they fled every man into his tent. Now y'all look at this. Now what that make us look like? Mm -hmm. We got the Ark of the Covenant out there and we high tail. I'm talking about full speed. Kneecaps about to beat breastplates out. <laughs> Top speed running and got the Ark of the Covenant out there. Well, what is going to look like to everybody else on planet Earth? <laughs> and then we got the Lord's weapon. And one thing is they ask him, why ain't we being delivered here? You still, you still, disobedient. still the same thing, but that disobedience. So God can't fight for us if we disobedient. That's the bottom line, y'all, what we're trying to get to. Mm. What you got back there, brother? It's something. Did everybody agree? Did everybody know that the ark came out without permission? Everybody? No, we're going to find out what happened. We'll read that a little bit further. But no, everybody didn't know. But what everybody should have known is that it wasn't been uh, brought into the battle like it should have been. Everybody should know that. But we get to the point, it's the same way when we come, when Moses went up to the mount and, and they start chiding with Aaron and say, make us gods, we don't know what happened to Moses. And they threatened Aaron. There's a lot of them out that song threatened Aaron and said, we shouldn't be doing this, but just follow right along. And they start plucking her rings out. And Aaron made that golden calf to satisfy the people. Y'all, just like these protests and different things, y'all, when we know they are setting them up to burn down things and they part of the burning too like they did wrong, you think they held back the National Guards up there? For, a re for The reason is they set most of the fire. Yeah. But they had to put you now. We get in the midst of that and run it in the battle of that. It's out of the order of warfare, according to the script. Go ahead. And the Philistines fought, and uh -huh. Israel was smitten, and they fled every man into his tent. And there was a very great slaughter, for there fell of Israel 30,000 foot men. So we lost 30,000 in that one, y'all, for disobedience. Go ahead, bro. So y'all, this is that disobedience like when you were hearing these other camps out here, just because we Israel, we need to get together. We can put aside our petty differences. We all know we Israel. Well, you don't believe in the Messiah. You believe Joseph is a natural dad. You believe this or you believe that. How can we walk together? How can we go to war with who? What you looking for, numbers? So we gonna go up to this beast, this fourth beast of Daniel, with numbers of disobedience, hmm. with misfits in the ring. <laughs> go ahead, why the center? You right, right. You the fight. Verse eleven. Uh huh. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hiphen. Hiphany, whatever that means, Hiphany, right? 
and Phineas, Phineas. Phineas were slain. So not even that, but the two sons of Eli, who was a high priest time, his sons were slain in the battle as well. Go ahead. And there ran and there ran a man of Benjamin out of the horn and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with and with earth upon his head. And when he came low, Eli sat upon the seat by the wayside watching. Right. For his heart troubled. Trembled. His heart trembled for the ark of God. So he sit back knowing he ain't should, should have not released it. So he sit back in the wayside watching the slaughter. And his heart is trembling. I'm, here come a man to him with dirt and clothes rent. So he know he done fell out sackcloth and ashes at this point. He got dirt on his head and clothes told he like something is bad right here. If anybody show up at your dirt, at your door with dirt on his head and his shirt toe down the middle, you know it's a problem. Go ahead. And when the man came into the city right. and told it, all the city cried out. Right. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, What meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man came in hastily and told Eli. Now, Eli was 90 and eight, 98 years old. Right. And his eyes were dim that he could not see. Right. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the horn. And I fled. To, I fled today out of the out of the army, and he said, "What is that? What is there? What is there done, my son?" And the messenger answered and said, "Israel is fled before the Philistines." That looks bad off the top, y'all. <laughs> Israel done run off before the Philistines. <laughs> his son, his sons was carrying the oil. Carry on. Y'all, that's like Iron Mike and Hunter Holyfield and Ali and they prime walk into a bar. And a group of midgets had them not telling them. <laughs> what you think you got coming? Go ahead, bro. And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines. Right. And there had been also a great slaughter among the people. Right. And two sons, and thy two sons, also, Hiphany and Phineas. Hopney and Phineas. Hopney and Phineas. Right. Or D. Or what? Or D. Uh huh. And the ark of God is taken. Oh, that's some terrible news, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God. See, when he made mention of the ark of God, he ain't worried about Hopney and Phineas. <laughs> when he made mention of the ark of God, what happened? That he fell from off the seat backward yeah. and by the side of the gate. And his neck broke, and his right. neck broke. Right. And he died. Right. For he was an old man in heaven. And he and he had judged Israel 40 years. So at this point, he like the Ark of the Covenant gone. And the fake Bible was supposed to be a big brother. Loaded over. You know. Draw the big brother, draw the whole load and wash it by itself. <laughs> and boom! And boom! And Y'all gonna finish this out, y'all, then we're gonna get 
right into the places that the Ark of the Covenant went. I just want to hit a couple places where there was a second Ark of the Covenant made. Because we had to end up having a replica, y'all, that we would go forth because of our disobedience, y'all. Go ahead. Read on down to the end of that. First Samuel 4 and 19. Uh -huh. And his daughter-in-law, <laughs> Phineas' wife, right. was with child, near to be delivered. Right. And when she heard the tidings <coughs> that the ark of God was taken, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself, she bowed herself and travailed. For her pains came upon her. So right here she went into labor. You know, when she heard about, what's the first thing she heard about? What immediately took her into labor pain? Oh, God. Oh, God. Awesome God. 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 Why? Because now children are going to be born in captivity. Mm. We're going to be servants to the Philistine. Mm. For what? Disobedience again? Go ahead. Verse 20. Uh -huh. And about the t and about the time of her death, the woman st that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did her, neither did she regain it. Regarded. Regarded. So, so she fell dead, so travailed, and born a son behind that. But y'all, this is how it's a trickle down effect for disobedience for our children. You know, when we go against the most high, his words, now y'all, y'all think about these things, y'all, we were at home, running our own kingdom, and hard head, as Bo King Woodbine and Jason Lewis, hard head. Go ahead. Verse 21, uh -huh. and she named the child Ichabod Saint. What's your name? Ichabod. It ain't Ichabod Crank. <laughs> <laughs> the glory is departed from Israel. See, mm. what's this name? The glory is departed from Israel. Mm. Y'all see, this is why all of the names in the scriptures, y'all, from Genesis to Revelation are titled. The mighty one of Israel. The Lord of Lords. The King of Kings. The righteous one. But his name is his law, statutes, and judgment. See, this name was given to him because the Ark of the Covenant has had, had been taken away. So this boy's name is going down in history about a vile act that we commit. The Ark is gone. That's how he's identified when he was born. But if we stick to the instructions, We get Matthew 5, 17. Great is he that keep his commandments. And teach them. Well, he should be called great what? In the kingdom of heaven. See, this is what the name we need to understand. And it's just called commandment keeping. With a broken and contrite spirit when you do wrong. If you think you can just go buy down the Sulo market and get you some turtle doves or some lamb shanks and throw them on the grill and offer some prayer, this ought to get to me on like this. <laughs> go ahead. Read and that she, out. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, Right. The glory is departed from Israel. Right. Because the ark of God was taken. So we can hold that, y'all. Just want to get right back into a couple spots. Because we're running out of time a little bit, just right into the second walk of the covenant. We'll get right into some Exodus 32. And y'all, what we're talking about is this inner man. Dressed up on the outside don't mean nothing. When you deal it with your adversary, Satan, who was once named Lucifer, the sharpest of them archangels that had wickedness on his mind. Because Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, they said, no, partner, we ain't with that. But he conned one third of the angels. I want y'all to think about that for a second. 
These angels witnessing things we ain't seen with the natural eye. And he conned them with a takeover. So how well do y'all think Satan knows these scriptures? But we play with him like he got to learn. No, he's called the adversary. Every adversary of yours is in battle array to know and look for your weak spots. Ain't nobody ever came at you for your strong spots. Right. Right. Exodus 32, start about verse 19. Exodus 32 and 19. Everybody there? Verse 19. And it came to pass as soon as he came, as soon as he came night nigh unto the camp. Tell you what, back it up to 15. And we'll get right to the heart of the matter what was taking place here. Verse 15. Uh -huh. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. Right. And the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. Right. The tables were written on both sides. Right. On the one side and on the other side were they written. Right. And the tables were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the table. And we ain't once yet seen that he wrote his literal name on these tables of stone. And we're going to see why. Because it didn't take long. Go ahead, brother. Verse 17. Uh -huh. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. Y'all, we got this thing about shouting when there's war, when there's noise of war in the camp, don't we? Hoot and holler. We know that sign. We get rough at parties. Who making all that noise back there? No. <laughs> Verse 18, and he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for, mat, for yes. mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, right? But the noise of them that sing, do I heard, right? <laughs> and it came to pass. As soon as he came nigh unto the camp, right. that he saw the camp and the and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mountain, and he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire, and ground it to powder. Mm. Go ahead. And, and stir straw. And straw, my bad. And straw it upon the water. So it's just like sprinkling it over the water and ground it to a fine uh, matter, so to speak. Go ahead. <laughs> and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, what did, what did this people unto thee, that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? See, Moses was so fired up, he ground and fire. He said, look, if I can't get it out of you, you know, this way, if I can't just show it to you, maybe if you drink down the word of the Lord, it'll, it'll set you back. Y'all out of control. 
Now y'all think about this. Moses up getting the Ten Commandments and we already into idol worship. Already. Already. Full fledged. Dancing. Partying. <laughs> with the same guys of Egypt you just watched being destroyed. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. Right. And almost each one of them plays that hit Egypt was almost every one of their high gods. Go ahead. Verse 22. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Right. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. What are they set on? On mischief. See, Aaron just bailed out real quick. He's like, Hold on, man. You know this people. They sat on mischief. Go ahead, bro. For they said unto me, Make us gods. We shall go, which shall go before us. For as, for as for this Moses, right. the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, right. we want not what is become of him. So right here they say we don't know what happened to him. Y'all, we hearing the same things about the Messiah. Man, we don't know what happened to the Messiah. That's been 2,000 years ago. Make us another God. Give us Benjamin Card over there in the desert. That's crazy, man. Give us you, Lion Mitchell. How about Jim Jones? Give us a God that we'll see we don't care what happens with him. Whatever his shortcoming is, just give us somebody we can see right now. Master Farrakhan. Yes, him too. Go ahead. What we at? It show you how short our memory are as a people. Like the Lord just brought us out of Egypt. Yeah. Destroyed the Egyptians. All that. Like, yeah. how, and then his presence is on the top. Don't oh, forget the mountain is smoking. There's a cloud coming up the mountain. Mm -hmm. And it's smoking as they doing all this. But you don't know what happened to Moses. Right. Like real quick, man, we lose focus on what he is. Real quick. Verse 24. Uh -huh. And I said unto them. Whomsoever have and have any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it, they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this cave. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Well, y'all, where do we see this same type of nakedness, right, in pure righteousness after salvation? Oh, we see Lord. this in the Garden of Eden, y'all. So we're seeing the same repeated acts that Satan gets you when you're, the Holy Spirit is on you, or you've been cleansed, and the Holy Spirit comes and dwell with you, because it's the only way the Holy Spirit gonna dwell with you, your temperature is righteous enough that the Most High is ready to deal with you. So it said Aaron made the people neck. Right. Basically allowed them to do wrong within the salvation realm. The most high, the mount like Mount say is still quaking, it's still on fire, they still getting ruined. We just came out, watched every miracle go down. And yet all of the people that were there were truly saved at that point. Mm. So when when they say you can't lose your salvation. You better think again. Go ahead, brother. I don't know. Y'all write this down. Isaiah 30, Isaiah uh, 30, chapter, verse 1. Going into that nakedness we just read. You don't think but me. Right. Not understand when another God and worship come in. Right. The worship the spirit of God is not covering you. Right. You're naked. It's like what Adam and Eve. Isaiah 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Most High God. So what kind of children? Rebellious children, saith Yah. That take counsel, but not of me. Right. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. See, y'all, all of these different coverings, it don't matter which way of what God you serve, long as this one is all leading to the same place. Well, that ain't what the scriptures say. Messiah say, any way up, you other way, you a thief and a robber. Go ahead, bro. That they may add sin to sin. What they add? Sin to sin. 
that walk to go down into each earth and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of each. See, this is Isaiah saying this same thing at the base of the mountain caused us problems. Yeah. Yet we're ready to run back into Egypt. We we got Israelites out here now teaching Egyptology again. <laughs> ready to run back to the dust bowl. Bunch of mad. What is the prophecy for us if we do run back to Egypt? Bunch What's our call? Okay. Verse okay. 3. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Uh, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt. And the trust in the what? The shadow of Egypt. Your confusion. So you can run back down there and think it's going to deliver you. And this is what he was telling them. He's like, look, wait a minute. You just saw what the Lord did to Egypt. Why would you double back to that? Y'all, it's almost like coming out of the church for whatever reason. We come out. And then you you mad about something. So you go back to the church to learn what? <laughs> right, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, you go back, you say, that's why I left her, because all these things were happening. <clears throat> I saw how y'all broke them off. The plagues in Egypt, you put on New Mount, Sunny Mount Church on the road to Damascus. And I come out of there. But yet now, these instructions are too much for you, and you go back for what? What are you going back to learn? What drove you out? Go ahead, bro. That's it for that. That's it for that. Where you at on that, on that Exodus 32? 26. 20, 26? Yep. We just, yeah, going down and finish that out, man. And then we'll uh, get right into uh, Deuteronomy 10 on the next one. Okay. Get right to all of the places where the ark has been taken to. Verse 26. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Exodus chapter 32, verse 26. Then Moses stood at the gate of the camp right. and said, Who is on the Lord's side? What he asked? Who is on the Lord's side? Yeah, right. this is just the point we're coming down to. Who on the Messiah's side? Right out. Who after the heart of the kill today? Right <laughs> like right there. Right. Right. Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus said the Most High God, Most High God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, right. and go, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Levi did according to the words to the word of Moses. And there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. Lord, don't take that uh, worship of other gods lightly. Lightly at all, y'all. So we can hold that and just get right there to Deuteronomy 9 chapter. And y'all see this, this 3,000 souls, y'all, this come out of Egypt through the Red Sea. So what are they saying? And lost what? Their salvation. And lost their salvation. Y'all, we see the same thing in Acts 5th chapter, I believe, where the people sold their property. Peter told them, he's like, look, you ain't lying to man, you lied to the most high. There's somebody at the door to get you. <laughs> so y'all, let's not be fooled by that. Once you in deal, you 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 in for good. How? With sin raining on the earth like this and the and the bottomless pit possibly ain't even been open yet. We ain't even seen wickedness yet. Y'all ain't seen killing on the level yet. The what's been prophesied. Word wood and purging on a daily basis. Sound like that correction cry. <laughs> Let's get what we at. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Verse 16. No, I'm going to go to 10. I just want to hit just right. 
Verse 7. Start with verse 6. Deuteronomy 9 and 6. I just want to get right to this point down to chapter 10 and 1. I just want to read a couple of verses on that. And we're going to see that there was a second. A lot of people understand there was a second set of stones made by disobedience, y'all, just like we had to make a new cup with Israel and with you. Again. Y'all, for what? The same thing. And y'all know what the same thing is? Hard head. Hard head. Go ahead. Go ahead. Nine and one. Nine and six. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter nine, verse six. Book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 9, verse 6. Yes, sir. Understand, therefore, that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. What, say that again. Read that again. <laughs> understand, therefore. Uh, what did he say? He said, understand this, y'all. What is understand? Stand up. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and get it straight. Understand this. Go ahead. That the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff naked people. So, the Most High said it ain't about what you've done that you get this land. Right. Go ahead. Verse 7. Remember. Do what? Remember. Okay. And forget not. How thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness. See, the Most High bring this all the way back, and it's the same thing we read throughout the scriptures. Remember what we did before so we don't get too high minded and say, well, I ain't going to be like my forefathers was. Go ahead, brother. From the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came unto this place. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord. Mm. Also in Horeb, ye provoked the Lord to wrath, so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you, then I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. So Y'all see that fasting? No bread nor water. Go ahead. Verse 10. Uh -huh. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of Yah. What was it written with? The finger of the holy power. That's right. And on all them was written according to all the words which the Lord spake with you in the mouth out of the midst of fire in the day of the assembly. Now, Mr. What? What? <laughs> wow. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days and 40 nights that the Lord gave me the two tables of stone, right. even the tables of the covenant. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence, for thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. What have they done? Corrupted themselves. Right. They are quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. Mm. They have made them a molten image. So we can hold up, y'all, and this is why the second commandment is so important. No graven images, y'all. You become defiled. You become defiled. Right. It was already there. Keep, oh, keep flip right over to 10 and 1, bro. That's crazy, man. I'm defiled. Yeah. That, that's simple, y'all. And y'all, when, when the mark of the beast come, y'all, they're going to make images to it. We got a boy, what that boy, uh, uh, the discomforter? The bed sheet. The bed sheet. He got an action figure now of himself. He called himself the Holy Spirit. He says he's the comforter, and on Kmart and Tars and our shelves is an action figure of this Negro. Somebody gonna get him a Christmas shirt. Right. On the shelves as an action figure in Iowa. He's a dead man walking. 
Chapter 10, verse 1. What does it say? At that time the Lord said unto me, You be two tables of stone like unto the first. So we see Moses is actually getting busy with these stones. Right here. Go ahead. And come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. And I will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest and thou shalt put them in the ark. Right. And I make, and I made an ark of shittim wood, mm. and hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. Right. And went up into the mount, having the two tables in my hand. Right. And he wrote on the tables according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you in the mount, out of the midst of fire in the day of the assembly. Mm. And the Lord gave them unto me, and I turned myself and came down from the mount, and put the tables in the ark which I had made. And there they be, as the Lord commanded. So do we have two arks here? Wow. This one is just out of shit of wood. Is it covered up? Is it got a gold? Right. So. We see in here that Moses had to go get the other one because this is profane the name of the Lord we did. Yo, because of my rebellion, skip down to verse 12, man, for, for time's sake. Verse 12. Uh -huh. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, mm. to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. See, and this is what the Lord God requires. This, this is said, this all I require. Nothing more, nothing less. Go ahead, bro. Verse 13. Uh-huh. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? Keep the commandments of the Lord. That is in Revelation chapter 2, 2, at the end of the book. All throughout Revelation 22, the last book. Matthew 5, 17, on down. Commandment keeping. Y'all, it don't matter what name you know if you continue to be a rebellious son or daughter. What you think calling the name for and we profane it? Something as simple as don't move the Ark of the Covenant unless you got two Levite priests holding it up. Man, them Levites over there eating, man. They ain't got time. Get that card over there and we'll throw it on the back of that. Go ahead. 13 again. Uh -huh. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Right. And his statutes. Right. Which I command thee this day for thy good. For thy what? For thy good. Right. Behold. The heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord thy God. Right. The earth also with all that therein is. See, and when we read Genesis 1 and 1 and 1 and 2, we see that the Most High created the heavens. It's plural. It's always been plural. So we understand that there's different levels of heaven that you can attain to get close to the Most High. When we read throughout these scriptures, it's called the third level of heaven. Paul mentions it in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 12. Uh, it's mentioned in, in Luke 16, I believe, the bosom of Abraham, called paradise, the thief on the cross. Most I told him, no, this day you should be in paradise. You can't ex 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 uh, extend yourself above that or exalt yourself above the third level. It's called paradise. <laughs> But why is it called paradise? <clears throat> it's just like the Garden of Eden, y'all. Everything you need is taking place right there in paradise. That's what Adam and Eve were, in paradise. But just like when you go to paradise, you can't, you can't do no wicked thing in paradise and expect to stay there. If the Most High cast us out of the wilderness and drop 3,000, how do you think you're going to bring 
that foolishness into the kingdom and dwell amongst him. Go ahead. Verse 15. Uh -huh. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them. Even you, above all people. How many people? Above all people. Some of the people. All people. Okay. As it is this day. Right. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. What oh, part of your body? The foreskin of your heart. So, where is the heart at? Inward. Right. Inward. Inward. And what is our heart? Spirit. Inward. Your right. mind. <clears throat> see, when you flee fornication, that don't mean because you see some rough work going down behind some curtain and you take off running. <laughs> No, that means when you see it, you get away from it. You turn away from it. You flee from that mentally in your heart first. Then where if you see it, it's second nature to you. You hear people all the time will say, well, I don't know how Christ could have hung around them prostitutes like that and didn't proposition any of them. <laughs> you can't see that. Right, no, you can't see that. But it, it means nothing when your mind is free of fornication. Just because they dress like that don't mean nothing. You are just cover up. What that mean? You, you showing what? If every time a piece of flesh is shown, you lose it, it's a problem already. I don't care where you run off to, what part of the land. It's rump shaking all over the, the globe. <laughs> What you going to run to if you don't know how to flee fornication up here? You don't think all of them women over in them Pakistani country, the only thing out is their eyes and yet they still getting stoned to death for what? Adultery. Read some more of that, brother. Verse 16 again. Uh -huh. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. Right. And be no more stiff necked. And y'all know what stiff neck is. You done seen it when you got your sons in the barber chair, the barber trying to cut it. He just won't turn it that way. Hold it, Be stiff. Stiff neck. Go ahead. Verse 17. <clears throat> For the Lord your God is God of God. God of what? God of God. Okay. And Lord of Lords. A great God, a might, and a terror, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. See, he's not a hireling that you can pay off. Ain't no rewards for the Lord. You, what we gonna brag about? And he made everything. You gonna give him back what he made? And he gonna be amazed at you. Right. <laughs> you showing the Lord something he don't know about. Read down to 19, bro. Verse so 18. Right into where the ark will take you. Go ahead, bro. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow. Right. And loveth the stranger in giving him food and rain. Right. Love ye therefore the stranger. Do what? Love ye therefore the stranger. Right. For ye were strangers. In the land of Egypt. See, y'all, this is one thing we have to understand too, because there's rebellion and stiffness going out there. It's all Israel only. Why is he letting us know for you was a stranger? Why? Because of that stiff neck. And where are we going back again for the same stiff neck? Back to who? Back in the hands of who? The stranger. Now, once we start cutting it off, but it's the stranger, y'all, that it and here to the words of the most high, y'all. It's a lot of strangers out there love our God more than we do. They shake and wag their head at us. These are the children of Israel. I, I mean, stanky leg into a point where the leg can reach across the street. These are the people of God. These right here. Got a question. Who got a question? Eleven and one. Eleven and one. Go ahead, bro. That's same Deuteronomy. 
Yeah, they say we run all that same Bible, you know, so Eleven one. Uh -huh. Eleven one says, "Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep His chalk, right, and His statutes, right, and His judgment, right, and His commands always." Mm -hmm. Always, y'all. It ain't hard, y'all. <laughs> you hear somebody say you can't keep God's commandments. Nobody can keep God's commandments. That's a lie. It's a bold face lie. Now, if they say you probably never be without sin, that's the truth. Or you gonna be a sinner to Christ come back, that's the truth. But keeping the commandments, that's a lie if they tell you you can't keep the commandments. The commandment has, here's the order. If you break it, you fix it this way. That's keeping the commandments. You keep the commandments in this land, if you get a ticket, you go to court, right? Ain't that what they tell you? If you found a violation, come to court. Now, you don't come to court, what happens? The most high will put out a spiritual going on. You think you're going to be able to hide somewhere, or we'll run back down in the beach? Fade you to a period. Fade you to a period. A lot of them in that day are going to say rocks fall on us, hide us from the face of him that's ready to destroy the world. No, he'll find you. He turned it over every rock, y'all. I just want to hit a couple quick spots, y'all, on where a different places that they say the Ark of the Covenant was taken to. We got a bunch of different locations. And y'all, we don't want to be looking for something to come out of somewhere and say, well, it came out of Ethiopia. It came out of Egypt. Well, it came from the basement of the back. The Ark of the Covenant is the true one. And they take it there. And there you go focusing your attention on something that may be false. We just read about a different part made in Deuteronomy 10th chapter. As we get deeper into that, you'll see no goal was about it. Was this a replica? And where is the true deed? First Kings chapter 10. We're going to get just a few of us. In the second Maccabees, and as we're warned, y'all, we just want to hit a couple of y'all. We're going to move through real quick to show you all of the locations that it possibly could be. And then we're going to get right into some revelation and we're going to see if it's even needed anymore. Who is the true walk of the covenant at this point? Solomon had uh, 700 wives and 300 concubines. Could she be one of them? 
It says she communed with him. She hung out. When you get into that, how do you pronounce them again? And even come out. Yeah, it says she hung out a lot longer than these scriptures detail it right here. I was with child when she left. Holly Selassie is a descendant of this. That's what they claim. That's what they claim. Go ahead, y'all. That's where the whole Rasta Farm is down right there. Right. All right, verse, uh, verse 3. Uh -huh. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king that she told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, Right. The house that he had built, and the feet of his stable, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cup bearer, and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her. Y'all see that? How she was saying when they that royalty was decked out. His cup bearers and she had never seen nothing like that before in her life. And she's a queen. Not only this, but this man is wise beyond all wisdom I've ever heard of before. Go ahead, bro. And she said to the king, uh -huh. it was a true report that I heard in my own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Right? How be it, I believe not the word until I came, and my eyes had seen. And behold, the half was not told me. Y'all see this? She said it wasn't half of what I just witnessed. What he even told to me in my life about you, King Saul. What you got?